This is episode 51 of Family Life Mornings, a morning radio show on family life, a network of stations across New York and Pennsylvania. Our podcast, some of the more revealing moments of the week. I wake up seven days a week, same time, every day, 7.15, every morning. I wake up. <laughs> I'm still asleep right now, as yeah. a matter of fact. That explains a lot. <laughs> Fun conversation, good music, and something to think about. Family Life Mornings. Michael Thomas Bogan doesn't work for Looney Tunes, but they may want to look into hiring him. That's because he has firsthand knowledge of the frustrations of Wiley Coyote and his never-ending efforts to catch the road runner. <laughs> Bogan video. This is this is the honest truth. He videoed a coyote chasing a road runner. <laughs> uh, this happened last Saturday and just like in the cartoon, the road runner escaped without a scratch. <laughs> now, no anvil dropped on the coyote's head and he didn't fall off a cliff. What about TNT? But, but <laughs> But the coyote did look right at the camera after the bird escaped, as if to say, I'm never going to catch this guy. (laughs) They're here to wake you up, pick you up, and lift you up. Steve, Therese, and Randy on Family Life. A friend you can turn to. It's always positive and great, encouraging to hear stories of young people doing amazing things. And here was this nine-year-old out fishing recently in Tennessee. And he was there just, and, and he captured, he helped save Apparently a really tiny doctor, a small what? doctor was in the water, and this, this nine-year-old was able to really just save, apparently, save a really, really well, small what doctor. What do you mean, small doctor? That doesn't what? make sense. Well, what? He, I'm reading, Coy Price, nine years old, was fishing uh-huh. with his family in Old Hickory uh-huh. Lake when okay. he reeled in a stir... Oh, I'm sorry, that's sturgeon, not surgeon. That would be my <laughs> fault. <laughs> that's, that's my fault. That was my <laughs> fault. That was, was sturgeon. Oh, man. That one tea can make a huge difference in a story, can it? (laughs) If it's too early for you to start thinking about real life, it's okay. You can hang out with us as long as you want. This is Family Life Mornings. I have a lot of issues. However, one of them, (laughs) I was waiting for the little giggle, one of them is not sleeping. I'm a very consistent sleeper, and I just found out why I'd never heard this before. How many parents, and I was guilty of this, make sure your kid goes to bed at the right, you know, go to bed at the same time. Same time, right? Apparently, according to a lot of sleep experts, the key to a good night's sleep is not the go to bedtime. It's Mm. the consistent wake up time. That's more important than the go to bedtime. So you train your body to get up at the same time. Now, obviously, you have to have a reasonable go to bedtime. I mean, you can't go to bed like an hour ago and wake up at the same time. Those things are pretty <laughs> obvious. But the I had never heard this before that the wake up time is huh. more important than the go to bedtime as far as consistency. And and I think I realize that's why I have great night's sleep. I wake up seven days a week, same time every day, seven fifteen every morning. I wake up. <laughs> Seven I'm 15. still asleep right now, as yeah. a matter of fact. It's mm-hmm. amazing. I would have never guessed. Well, I think you would have eventually. <laughs> yeah. If you can't say it in front of your kids, you won't hear it on Family Life Mornings. Well, the situation is true for many of us. We had no idea that the last time we left our desk at the office would be the last time we would <laughs> see that desk for months but that's what happened. However, people are starting to get back to their desks. Right. right. And uh, they don't really remember how they left it. <laughs> One lady in particular was really alarmed at what she was going to find when she went back to work uh, this past Monday because she had left a banana Oops. in one of her desk drawers. <laughs> oh, no. oh, that's It had horrible. been there for... Ah. Two oh. months. Oh, boy. Oh. And she wasn't quite sure what she was going to find. Um, she took a picture of what she saw. It right. was not a mushy, squishy, damp mess. Uh-uh. The banana basically had shriveled up, and it was rock hard. Ooh. And it had turned completely 
black. Oh. That long. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> now, someone suggested that since older bananas are what make the really good banana bread. Right. That's uh-huh. what I was thinking. You might want to give that a shot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know we're friends because we're already on a first name basis. It's Family Life Mornings with Steve, Therese, and Randy from Family Life, a friend you can turn to. Are you in that Zoom meeting and there's always that one person who seems to know so much more than anybody else and they kind of dominate the conversation and you're saying, Boy, I wish, I just wish one day I would have mm-hmm. a great piece of information that I could just plug into my Zoom meeting and impress people, and I'd be the one. Well, here you go. Ready for your next Zoom meeting, perhaps today? Like a person's talking and talking and talking, and all of a sudden they stop, and you jump in and go, do you know the dogs typically go to the bathroom in alignment with the north-south axis? That will get people's attention right there. <laughs> I know. Have you, you ever been? What? Have you ever been on the Zoom meeting with the guy who says the thing that makes everybody make a funny face? Right there, you go. That's well, you. it's been known for a long time that the dogs and other animals can detect Earth's magnetic fields. You can impress them with this information. It also might explain why it takes your dog so long to decide where so to go like, to the bathroom. It's like a compass. Ah, like, ah. do I go but here? Or do I go here's here? the exactly. Here's the thing that impressed me most about this study. They did this for two years. Years, two years they studied this. Really? And you thought there were no good jobs available out there. <laughs> Can you imagine being the guy that has to watch the dogs go to the bathroom? <laughs> are you just starting your day? Well, so are we. It's Steve, Therese, and Randy on Family Life Mornings. Do you have any stuffed peppers hanging around the house? Uh, well, this is almost like a deconstructed stuffed peppers because it takes a lot of the, the work out of actually stuffing the peppers and you're making a casserole out of it so you get all the the great delicious taste of a stuffed pepper without so much of the work i love when chefs use that fancy phrase deconstructed it mostly just means like taken apart and shoved in one big pile right (laughs) you got it yeah pretty much (laughs) (laughs) all right so the components of the stuffed pepper you have some rice in there yep rice uh some ground beef some onions um peppers uh, tomatoes, tomato sauce, some seasonings, uh, some Worcestershire sauce, which is always fun to say. Mm-hmm. And uh-huh. uh, you top it all off with some melted cheese, and you've got dinner. What time is dinner, Nick? And could you just put it out on the driveway? We'll be by to pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, same time as yesterday. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, Nick, I'm going to be honest with you. I hated stuffed peppers growing up, and I've only learned to like them recently because instead of using green peppers, I'll use, like, red or orange or yellow. Yeah. So you can kind of make this how your family wants it. The red and the yellow peppers are a little bit sweeter than the green peppers, so you can definitely sweeten it up a little bit, or you can even spice it up a little bit. Why not throw in some poblanos or some jalapenos or something like that and kind of give it a Mexican flair? Oh, now you got Randy smiling now. Mm. Now you got (laughs) that. Sounds great. Uh, (laughs) Always check out Nick's Picks. You can fix for fun new recipes to try with your family at fln.org slash mornings. Thank you, Nick. You are welcome. It's Steve, Therese, and Randy on Family Life, a friend you can turn to. Well, it's a pretty popular sandwich. It might be my favorite kind of sandwich. You know, you toast the bread, a little smear of mayo, that perfectly fried bacon for the salty factor. You get that crisp crunch of the lettuce. And then, well, it depends. I mean, if you were making a BLT, you would add tomato. Mm -hmm. But this new sandwich that's going viral online is the BLT. S. S. It's bacon, lettuce, and hmm. strawberries. Huh. Sliced strawberries. Well, let's give it a try. And before you think, well, that's crazy to put a red fruit on a sandwich, well, ah, yeah. you say tomato. <laughs> yeah. I say Strawberry. <laughs> Pronounce it differently. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Totally different. You can either roll over and go back to sleep, or you can get going right now with Steve, Teresa, and Randy. This is Family Life, a friend you can turn to. People can't be replaced, right? I know a lot of things have continued to go on sort of automated through this COVID outbreak. And you might even be like buying stuff online, but... Sometimes it's just better if you have a person involved. Uh, this guy wanted to get a a, a glass enga- like engraved for his wife mm-hmm. for her birthday, right? And, you know, you're filling out the form, and this section says, like, what you want your engraving to say, and then there's yeah. special instructions. Mm-hmm. And so uh, he fills out everything. He pays for it with his credit card. Again, there's no human involved in the process. The glass arrives, and this is what the very special mm-hmm. engraving says— 
can we have it delivered before Monday, if possible, as that is her 30th <laughs> birthday? So, see, that's just the wrong thing wrong, in there. Yeah, wrong. Yeah. Sp- and so that's right. why yeah. you just it's, can't yeah. replace people, right? <laughs> we can't always take your call, but we will see your text if you send a message to 888-413-4156. This is Family Life Mornings. And dig in the dirt a little bit this weekend. It feels like gardening is very popular this year. And maybe it's your first foray into doing some vegetable gardening and you don't have a lot of patience. Here's something that you can plant that goes pretty quickly. You ready? It's radishes, okay. green beans, mm-hmm. and microgreens, things like lettuce and things like that. Oh. So if you're looking for kind of a quick turnaround, you know, I don't want to wait till August to get these things. Those are the three yeah. things, the radishes, okay. the green beans, and the microgreens. However, it will take a little longer to grow peas and quiet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Starting your day with a smile and a dose of encouragement, too. Family Life Mornings. Someday in the uh-huh. future, I don't know when that is, uh, that uh, we don't need to wear masks anymore. I'm looking forward to that day as well. Mm. Uh, now, there's also going to be some extra masks hanging around the house, and I know some people will want to hold on to them maybe. However, right. there's going to be perhaps excess masks. And uh, think of interesting, clever, fun, funny, maybe unusual use for those extra masks. My name is Lisa, and I live in Ordensburg. Got a great and use for one of those masks. I have a flower trellis that doesn't have flowers on, so when I come home after work, I hang my mask on there to air out. Now, if your mask were floral, then it would be, Ooh. like, decorative. Ooh. See? Yep. I live in uh, Berwick, PA, and my name is Catherine Crow. Um, when my son was a preemie, preemie, he was only two pounds and nine ounces, and they took that mask and used it for a diaper. Oh, they yeah, tied yeah. it. They took this because he couldn't fit into a preemie diaper. He was teeny tiny. Perfect. Great yes. idea. Thank you. Hi. Uh, this is Chris. I live in Lotsville, PA. Baby doll hats. <laughs> okay. You could tie and it right Tie it right around. there okay. in the little baby doll. <laughs> Thanks for making us a part of your day. We're a friend you can turn to. Family Life. Memorial Day weekend, and that brings up the hidden talent of Bob Price from Family Life News, who the memorization of poetry is is an amazing thing for you, Bob. This is a poem that was written back in 1915 by a Canadian doctor named John McRae, who lost a good friend in a battle over in Europe, and it's called In Flanders Fields. And you've memorized this. I have, and I think I might have recited this in previous Memorial Day uh, celebrations, but in Flanders fields, the poppies grow between the crosses row on row that mark our place. And in the sky, the larks still bravely singing fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead short days ago. We lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow. Loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you, from failing hands we throw, the torch be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. Steve, Therese, and Randy, friends you can turn to on Family Life Mornings.